Before designing the iPhone 5, we studied how customers use their iPhones and we discovered something pretty interesting. People only use iPhones to take photos of their food. They're sad and alone, so they use pictures of food to create the illusion of a fulfilling life. With that knowledge, we went back to the drawing board, introducing the iPhone 5. Mm -hmm. We rethought everything. Welcome to the Infinite Loop Show, episode number, what is this, 31? 31! Wow, I'm Michael Gaines. And I'm Casey Coughlin. <laughs> do you have an iPhone 5? Do you want an iPhone 5 just like that, to take pictures of your food? No, because that looks just like a Sony SLR. <laughs> <laughs> if, you uh, have to see the video for it. I yeah, the, uh, the, the phone is actually a camera, and... Mm -hmm. um, I, it, it was funny. I was I was reading the comments on that on Google Plus, and of course, all the fan droids come out and they talk about how how pathetic iPhone users are. Because, oh right, because only iPhone users do that. Right, only only the iPhone users take pictures of their food. Mm -hmm. No, Android users do too. Admit it. Admit it. if you're one of them. Admit it. You've done it too. Everybody on Facebook and Pinterest do it. And I don't think those communities are 100% iPhone users. <laughs> In fact, we know they're not because Pinterest just came out with their uh, their own Android app. What was it, last week? And mm -hmm. there was, you know, a big to-do about that. So clearly... <laughs> don't hide it. You're an Android user and you take pictures of your food. It yeah, you know, it was funny when you first watched that video, but then after I just go, nah, I lost its its humor already. But you know what's not so humorous? Um, what? Apple is now the most valuable company of all time. If you don't go for inflation, if you yeah don't you know keep up with the news that followed right after that big announcement. Apple was uh, listed at uh, $661 billion, and everybody just jumped on that saying, wow, no, they're really not the first time in history because it was IBM and Microsoft. And if you, yeah, if you adjust for inflation, IBM was $192 billion in, in 67. Uh, Microsoft was $856 billion in 99. Uh, but this is just like the movies when they say, "Well, uh, you know, such and such movie is the yeah. best one of all time," and, or, and 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 nobody really factors in that Gone with the Wind tickets were a quarter in 1939. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I mean, obviously, six sixty one billion uh, total market cap, and that's what we're looking at is is impressive and amazing and a lot, um, but. Like they said, um, you know, like a day or two later, everybody was like, wait a minute. But um, another kind of side note to this that I think is interesting, it's only taking into account publicly traded companies. Yes. So there could be a ton of private companies out there worth far more, but we don't know because they're private. Mm -hmm. so they don't have to Industries, Wayland yutani Right, they don't have to release their industry. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, totally. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Uh, it's good for Apple, and I was again getting. Uh, I was getting into a <laughs> a Google Plus argument over the weekend about. Um, it, it wound up turning into why iTunes sucks. Oh, okay. Yeah, because you know, I, I I'll sort of go off on a little side tangent here. Uh, I have found over the last few months that most people, most Android fans that hate Apple or anybody that hate app that hates Apple is mainly because they don't completely understand what the issues were when certain things happened. For example, mm. uh, one of the arguments was, well, you know, Apple had that problem where they had to lock all their MP3s when uh, they were first selling uh, songs on iTunes. And I said, mm -hmm. well, Apple tried to prevent that from happening, but couldn't because the studios had too much of, of a strong arm, strong arm on Apple. Now things are different. 
Like, why mm-hmm. are you looking at things that happened years ago when now things are radically different? Right. That's uh, that's not the case. DRM has been lifted on most of. I don't know if it's completely all of the listings on the iTunes Store now, but most of it is DRM free. Most yep. of it is even offered in you know a better bit rate now. Mm-hmm. We have a lot more options, and and that's really like a lot of things that Apple does, and app and not even Apple. A lot of things a lot of companies do. The first iteration is always. You know, I mean, it's a first iteration. It's it's stripped down. It's basic compared to following iterations mm-hmm. where they add more features. They get <laughs> kind of uh, a better idea of what direction they want to go in, and you know, things progress. Sure, it's called progress. <laughs> you know, so of course. <laughs> Yeah, indeed. Uh, so now people are saying that Apple's on the fast track to a trillion dollars. I maybe maybe well, I don't know. I mean, it it would make sense because it's a lot easier to get to like once you cross the billion or the million threshold, it's mm-hmm. a lot easier to get to a billion mm-hmm. and and vice versa. Um, in, in sales, usually it takes companies like half the time to get to the next milestone. They're not dying. You know, stock isn't, I mean, maybe on a day-to-day basis stock dips, but it's not by any means plummeting over, year over year. It's rising, and it's really not stopping anytime soon. Oh, yeah. So. I haven't checked the, the stock today, actually. I've been busy. Oh, gosh, 668.87. Wow. It went up 12.81 points today. Yeah. So um, take that to the bank. <laughs> if you could. Uh, all right, so <laughs> are Apple lawyers smoking crack? No, they... Uh, this came from Judge Lucy Coe, who's presiding over this whole Apple Samsung cluster. So, and, and it's mm-hmm. just—it's turning into <laughs> such a joke. I—I I, I swear, it's like I used to read this every day, and now it's just gotten out of control, and I don't even pay attention to it much anymore because now I'm just waiting for the damn verdict or whatever happens. Or maybe well, they settle. Good. I mean, they're <clears throat> getting there incredibly fast. I thought this was going. I mean, that's fast. But yeah, Lucy Co said the um, the inf- now infamous smoking crack uh, comment after uh, both Apple and Samsung were bringing up rebuttals, and Apple lawyers brought up a seventy-five page briefing and wanted to see another over twenty-two rebuttal witnesses. Um, and Lucy Co does not plan on spending that much more time on this trial <laughs> she's got oddly enough another apple trial to get to um yeah. but so yes when she um when they did that her her exact quote was you want me to do another do an order on 75 pages unless you're smoking crack that's not gonna happen i don't know if that was a, an appropriate statement for a um for a judge well no, it wouldn't have gotten so much press if, you know, yeah. it it wasn't completely out of the norm. Mm-hmm. And now, after all this, um, the, 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 the whole thing has gone nowhere. I'll, at least I don't think they have. I mean, I mean do, we, do we have any, any further information on this whole thing right now? Because I'll, I just keep hearing the same thing, is that they've got 
Apple is obviously uh, accusing Samsung of copying. Samsung mm-hmm. is accusing Apple of strong arming the whole thing and copying Samsung in some and, and also yeah. And this whole thing just goes around and around and around and. Yeah, they were um, either Monday or Tuesday this week where the CEOs, uh, Apple and Samsung CEOs, were ordered to talk and try and reach an agreement one last time. That got nowhere. Mm -hmm. Big surprise. Um, So now, like I said, we're at the jury deliberation stage. And they have, I believe it was like 191 pages of instructions oh they need to go through. Can you imagine being a jury on a, a jury member on this trial? And no, it would go- be awesome. You think so? Why? Well, I think like a techie person would find it much more interesting than oh, yeah. the average person they probably have on the trial. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, your average juror is um, a little bit you know, older, I don't want to say, but I mean, it's people who don't have a lot to do and have a lot of time on their hands. You know, mm-hmm. they have time to, to spend weeks on a trial. So, um, you know, they're, they're probably not going to be the most informed, the, you know, keeping up with anything. But I think to see all, you know, all the inner workings brought up of both companies in the evidence. And then in this jury deliberation, they get, um, hardware examples from both companies oh, yeah. so yeah. they're getting you know iPhones Android phones tablets iPads to play with and you know decide this case mm-hmm. so uh, I think we're all eagerly awaiting this to be over and I think it's actually going to set some precedents for it's totally I mean both both sides are going to lose big no matter what mm-hmm. you know if Samsung wins then it's open season on Apple for everybody else to come through and say, you know, patent infringement. And if Apple wins, then it's really kicking the butt of um, not just Samsung, but Android. You know, and Samsung's going to have to go back, change a ton of hardware and Mm -hmm. software, and it's really going to cost, you know, not just money, but uh, so much. Time and and, um, and trust. Market share, yeah. Uh, Consumer trust, you know, completely. Yeah. Uh, so we'll uh, sort of keep an eye on that. I don't know. I, I, like I said, at this point, I'm just waiting for something, some miracle to happen <laughs> and just, yeah. just wait for that to be over. What is over? Yes. Best transition ever. <laughs> like that? Uh-huh. I come from the Tom Merritt school of transitions. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Apple genius TV ads are gone. Thank God. I didn't like them. Did you like them? Did we talk about no, this? No, nobody liked them. I mean, these first came out during the Super Bowl. And ever since then, it's been like an all-out onslaught on these ads. Mm-hmm. I, nobody I know has liked them. Apparently, we have somebody in the um, it's chat room who can, who can, who can mind them. <laughs> um, but I, that's as good as it gets, right? You either hate them or you think they're like... Uh, I can tolerate it. Whatever. Okay. <clears throat> I, like I said before, I liken them to the whole dude you're getting Adele commercials. It and- totally is. And it makes Apple people seem like idiots. If yeah. you're an idiot who can't figure out a computer, mm-hmm. then you should get an Apple, <laughs> which I'm not saying may or may not be an actual selling point. True. But it's how it, it's presented. I mean, yeah. Like, right. I'm t- totally stupid. What do I do? Buy Mac. Yeah. I, and and in the meantime, yeah, Macs are are less complicated than Windows. They are. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and and so they're good for a lot of people that don't necessarily want to dive into the guts of everything, and and the, and everything is right where things should be. But man, these commercials were just not done well. No, no, and the, uh, I mean, really, we could talk all day on these commercials, but I don't want to. Um, I'm glad they're gone. I'm glad they're pulling them. And clearly, they're pulled from Apple's site and YouTube. So clearly, Apple is going to move forward on a very different campaign. Mm-hmm. What's, uh, what's going on with AT&T and FaceTime, this whole thing? Well, okay. So if you, for those that, you know, our subset audience that's been living under a rock, <laughs> um, 
AT and T has been planning to try and block FaceTime in uh, in iOS six. FaceTime will be able to uh, you'll finally be able to do it over cellular because mm-hmm. up until now everything, both iPads and iPhones that can do FaceTime, a, you can only do it over Wi-Fi. So yeah. once iOS six comes out. It'll be allowed over cellular, but AT&T is saying that only certain data plans will be able to do FaceTime. So they'll, so you'll have to get like your, say your twenty or thirty dollar iPhone data plan won't be able to do it. You'll have to get the thirty or forty dollar iPhone data plan with FaceTime. Right, right. It, which, which is crap, and um, AT&T's even more. Cr- excuse for this and I've heard I've heard two of these now uh, one is that because FaceTime is a pre-installed app that comes on the phone it's okay to block yeah and I, I don't really I understand how that law comes about I, I get that what I don't like is the fact that what all Apple needs to do is just create uh, FaceTime as a separate app and then you're done and, and then and then they're forced retarded. to do it which is it's, yeah, it's ridiculous. Then because Apple is bowing to AT and T, which they've never done from day one. No, as a matter of fact, it was AT and T that sort of bowed to Apple yes. in order to get the yes. iPhone to begin with. Yes, exactly. And, and now AT and T is saying to Apple, "Well, we're just we're not gonna going to do to- this." Right. Now the <laughs> the other side of it is well, what do you do because of it? Like if you want to switch over to Verizon, well, you can, but then you've got all the Verizon problems. It's, it seems like this country is all screwed right. up when yeah. it comes to cellular companies. There's no, no good it, one. It literally is. Whenever you talk to somebody in the UK or France or any other company or country, I mean, their their view of our mobile plans and and architecture is just like it's so foreign. I mean, it's literally foreign. Um, it's so screwed up and effed up, and we have just been raked over the coals mm-hmm. and held over barrels for years by cell phone companies, and we're like, "Thank you, may I have another?" Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's been going on. It's so institutionalized at this point that it's going to take a lot to turn that back. Well, that's why I thought Apple and, and Google with the Nexus One was going to change all that. I thought that's why I was such a fan of Android originally is because I thought that Google was going to kick the asses of the cellular companies and say, no, we're not going to do it your way anymore. And then, of course, look what happened. No, yeah. Then Google yeah. caved, and well, that's a Everybody's whole other story. Caved, There's a yeah. petition uh, on AT and T's, uh, or not on AT and T's, on nine to five Mac dot com. Um, well, they have a link to a petition that you they can have a sign. Link. Yes, we're not going to say the URL. It's far too long. Just look <laughs> up on nine to five Mac. There's a petition. Or well, there's an article with a link to a petition that you can sign uh, to stop AT and T from blocking FaceTime. Yeah. Um, the thing is, have you ever really needed to use FaceTime over cellular? Is that such a big deal for many people? I think the people who use FaceTime, it is. Hmm. Um. I mean, I rarely use it now. You know, but um, it it would be nice to. Say you know the say I'm not a heavy user. There's maybe a handful of instances where it would fit and be a, be a good you know like oh this I wish I could do FaceTime now. Right. I think that half of the times that I actually think to do FaceTime, I'm not actually on Wi-Fi. Yeah. So say you know there's only five times I use FaceTime. If they can maximize that wherever I am. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I totally see. See, with me, though, I just, um, I never really felt the need. Look, when FaceTime first came out, everybody was like, ah, FaceTime is awesome. I don't use it very often. See, I know. I'm in I the same. have to. I'm in the same boat, but I think the times that I would think to use it, being able to use it anywhere would not curb my usage of it. Yeah, I think for me, because I'm just so old school, I, I'm just used to talking to somebody on the phone. 
It's just yeah, hearing the voice. True. You're it, an old man, so oh, I mean, you have to snap. take that into account. Excuse me while I mess with your audio here. Hold on one second. No, Thanks. but no, seriously, uh, I think a lot of people are like that. Is is uh, some people are, or most people, I would think, would just be used to talking to somebody on the phone. You don't have to see them. We've gotten along for many years without without having to see them. In fact, we've sort of uh, gone from talking on the phone to just tweeting or sending text messages or something like that. Like I'm on my way home, and that's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So. Mm, I don't know if this is going to work. I think AT and T is one is going to wind up winning this. Unfortunately, um, I don't think they're going to cave to a lot of people because they, they've got to keep their their self interests uh, in mind. Yeah, but I would like to see Apple really step up, and I don't know what they could do, but they definitely have a lot of weight to pull around. So if Apple, if anybody can do anything, it would be Apple. Yeah. Save us, Apple! Save us! <laughs> All right, let's move on to rapid fire. Uh, this has been going around with with the new iPhone five rumors going around. There's just been a ton of stuff. Um, there's a source saying that Verizon has blocked out vacations for September 21st to the 30th, and September 21st is supposed to be the first day that the iPhone five will be available. So that makes mm -hmm. sense. But mm -hmm. that's a nine day blackout. That's a lot. So you figure that's well, they That's do this with Apple employees all the time, and AT and T's used to it. You know, welcome to the club, Verizon. Sprint's <laughs> gonna have to get used to this. This this is what happens when Apple products, you know, are launched. You you don't get a break, and you just keep shoving those products out the door and taking our freaking money. Yeah. Does this happen when a Samsung phone is released? I don't think it does. I don't think. It does. No, it doesn't. It really doesn't. <laughs> uh, are we really getting this smaller dot connector or no? Yeah, because this photo of a USB cable to small dock connector proves <laughs> proves the existence of a small dock. If it's a picture, it must be true. Yeah, Pixar didn't happen. <laughs> uh, we, we sort of knew that this was going to happen for a while, and uh, I believe it. I think, as I said before, there are a lot of redundant pins in the 30-pin, or not redundant, but... Um, that's a pins wrong that word. aren't being used. Well, yeah, useless pins that aren't being used or, or don't need to be used anymore. Um, Damn those can... useless pins. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I think uh, Apple decided that they're going to just shrink that, that dock connector. And I suppose everything else can be done over Bluetooth or, or something else. Yeah, Cause... yeah, Bluetooth could step up or Wi-Fi mm -hmm. um, or... Uh... Well, probably not iCloud, depending on what it is. Yeah. But even even iCloud now, like we don't even need the actual cable to plug, you know, to sync anymore. So. Yep. And now this is big, depending on what you do with yeah. audio. Um, there has been an app called SoundForge Pro from Sony for a long time on Windows, and. People are always asking, when is it going to come out for the Mac? When is it coming out for the Mac? Well, it turns out that Sony confirms that it is coming out for the Mac. Uh, SoundForge Pro, we don't know what version it is, but they said that it's going to be completely redesigned for the Mac, uh, specifically. And so, I think that this is big. Uh, the thing I looked at the price, it's $375. And I was, of course, looking at it for maybe enhancing what I can do with the podcast or something like that. I, I don't know. I may work with it. Some people that do podcasts actually use Logic, a Logic yeah. 7. I don't really feel that I need that. Uh, I don't know if I need a, you know, like a $400 audio app just to clean up some well, of this Well, this one's stuff. with three and some change. You're almost there. Yeah. So would sound would you say SoundForge Pro kind of sits between GarageBand and Logic then? Sort of, yeah. yeah. Uh, and on Windows there are two versions of SoundForge. There's uh, the Pro version and there's like a light version. Nice. Um, so I'm just gonna have to take a look at that and, and see what it's like because I love GarageBand. I've been doing uh, podcasts with GarageBand for seven and a half years now, and yeah, it's got its little issues here and there, but uh, it, I I I can't use Audacity so. Uh, I may take yeah, no, this. I think GarageBand is far better than Audacity. Yep. But, um, well, I mean, you can only use GarageBand on a Mac, so there's a pretty big limitation there if you sure. don't have a Mac already. 
then you know your choices are pretty few. But um, <laughs> yeah, so are they only bringing the pro version to the Mac? Well, not the it light version says. I guess then they'd be directly competing with GarageBand, which is pretty silly because it comes with the Mac. So it, why? It, yeah, why exactly? All right, what's our? Uh, we're moving on to trips. So what's your trip for this week? We haven't had a trip in a long, long time, and when I came across this, I was super excited. So this was on, what was this on, TUAW? Yes. So TUAW has an article um, on how to send a tweet via the notification center on the Mac, like you can do on iOS. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's just a little Apple script. Um, I love Apple scripts because they're super easy to use and learn. It's a very plain English kind of scripting language. Mm -hmm. So, and they actually have in the article, like the full, um, the full script right there. You just need to copy, paste into Apple script and then shoot it out as an application. Um, and, and you're done. I mean, it's, it's the easiest, simplest little tweak and, um, and like I said, it uses Apple Script, which I love. Um, so go hit up TUAW if you're interested in that, and you can be tweeting from the notification center, which you know you could argue the usefulness of, but what the hell? <laughs> you know, I haven't looked at Apple Script in a long time. Uh, I know, right? I love it. Yeah, and it's one of those things that when I need it, it's awesome. Mm-hmm. But most of the time, I really don't. Uh, no, yeah, it's like when you need to just make i don't just you know a little like action thing (laughs) i don't know it's hard to explain it's like kind of a cross between well it's it's it is like powershell for windows but it's like task scheduler as well so yep all right what's your app for the week well my app was going to be pitfall for (laughs) ios but this dumb game crashes every time I open it. <laughs> and you're not jailbroken, really... right? No. Oh, well, I'm running the beta, but let's see if we can get it going. No. No, it won't. It just crashes to the desktop again. Is the um, full version out yet? That's the full it's the full version. They didn't have a trial or anything, I don't think. Oh, you it's said it was a beta. S- oh, iOS six. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah, I'm running the iOS 6 beta. Oh, well, um, maybe that's why. But the, the game is the full version, and it's 99 cents by Atari on the App Store. Um, we talked about it last week on the Nexicon, mm-hmm. a very awesome podcast, if I do say so myself. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I was super excited to play that, but every time I open it, you know, it gets halfway to the title screen and then crashes so oh, yeah it's got well, you can look at the logs maybe you know download what? it in an update or so i have a trip can i do sort of a can i go back and do a trip i found this out it's as a developer i've always gotten the logs directly from xcode using the organizer mm-hmm. uh, you connect your your yeah, right. device and, and then you get the logs well, what I didn't realize, because I've just never done it this way, is that there's a way that you can actually get the, um, let's see if I can find it, uh, you can get the logs of crashed apps, and now I can't remember how to do it. I think it was, it was in um, general, I think, oh, uh, uh, about. Yeah, here we go. General, about, and then diagnostics and usage. And then you can go to the diagnostic and usage data, and then it'll show you the crashes that happen in your app. Now, for most people, yeah. none of these are really going to matter. But if you're a developer, uh, you can you can send this to uh, a developer if you have to. For example, I've got something called latest crash, and then one of the apps I was working on, or or I've got one here. This is one low memory for Instagram. I've got a ton of low memory uh, diagnostic messages for Instagram, and they're they're useless for most people. Um, but if you've gotten good with a developer at, uh, at at for whatever app that you're using, you could send this to them and say, "Look, this is crashing here. Can you take a look at it?" And it's got information. If you, if you know what you're doing, you've mm-hmm. uh, you can put it into Xcode, set a breakpoint, and run and, mm-hmm. uh, run the app, and you find out where it's crashing. So that helped me last week. 
because somebody was beta testing one of my apps and it crashed. I couldn't figure out why because I couldn't reproduce it. And then once I got mm -hmm. the, the crash log back, that helped me because it wasn't giving symbols. This crash log has like everything that's going on on the phone. Yeah, it does. It's actually got a lot of, of information. It's in the like, yeah, I'll look at that later. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My app for this week is uh, is actually an app that I might have mentioned before. I, I don't remember, but uh, I Stop Motion 3 was just released for the Mac. What the, the big deal about it now is that you can use the iPhone and iPad as a remote camera. And this is huge because anybody yes. who's done stop motion knows there are two things. One, you can't predict how long it's going to take for the next frame to be recorded. If you're doing like claymation or something like that, you, you need to, to hit the button for the next, to record the next frame without touching the camera. Because if you touch the camera, you shake it and then you, you'll see the shake when you play mm -hmm. all the frames back. So now you can do it remotely. And I think that's pretty freaking awesome. And speaking of remotely, I'm, I'm going to give it like a little bonus thing. I found this out accidentally just before we started recording the show. Uh, the app that I use to do all the sound effects in all my podcasts, Soundboard, I didn't know until today that they have a remote app for the iPad. And so the, the reason why I have a problem recording this stuff is that if I have to lower the volume on one app i have to raise the volume on soundboard and you can't do two things at the same time so now what i can do i'm going to sort of bring this up on the video but this is this is my soundboard and everything is in there and it, it mirrors what's on the screen on my second monitor so now i can drop or raise the volume on an app on the mac and then i can sort of do it with my other hand on the ipad very good that's nice i like mm -hmm. it People are getting smart. I like smart apps. <laughs> yeah. Like who? I don't think there's like a, a pro dumb app party out no, there. So. <laughs> All right. We done? It looks like. It looks like. All right. You want to do the contact? Week, but yeah. Oh, well. You want to do the contact uh, thingy this time? Uh, you can contact us at the Infinite Loop Show at gmail.com. We're the Infinite Loop Show on Google Plus, on Facebook. We're Infinite Loop TV on the Twitters. <laughs> I am Casey Queso, K A C E Y K A S O on the Twitters. My Twitters. co host here is at Star Mike. And if you can't spell that, uh, you have problems. Um, <laughs> What am I missing? Anything? Uh, no, I think that's everything. Yeah. All right. Well, until next week. Well, party on, Wayne. Party on, Garth. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>